I just want to garden in peace. Good evening, everybody. I say evening because, boy, today has been just crazy. And this is the first time I'm able to get to our little podcast vlog. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Schenk, and I'm the founder and managing broker of Deerwood Realty here in St. Louis. We're a boutique brokerage. We specialize mainly in residential and light commercial uh, purchases and uh, sales. And uh, on our channel, we talk, uh, talk about things like neighbors, HOAs, uh, bad real estate deals, bad landlords, bad real estate agenting. If that's even a word, it's not. It's not, it's not the way you're supposed to say it. But if that's something you'd be interested in, um, you, should probably, uh, you should probably hit the subscribe button and you should probably check out our channel. That would be good. So uh, with that, I'm going to try and do something totally different tonight. Um, it's going to be story time, and I gotta I gotta watch the time because I don't want to go too long. So, here we go. I was reading on uh, a popular uh, um, advice column. <clears throat> a lady said that uh, she was a forty year old single mother with uh, two teenagers that had moved out of the house, and her neighbor had moved in next door, and she was a twenty four year old single mom, and. She had a daughter of her own, recently divorced, and uh, what was happening was, is the mother, the 40-year-old, was, she likes to garden. It's her oasis. It's what she likes to do to relax, unwind, and uh, she likes to be left alone out there. And uh, her neighbor, the 24-year-old, would come over and just vent, talk about how bad her day was, talk about how bad, you know, how hard it is to raise children in today's world, and uh, just... Just be that way. And, uh, you know, the 40-year-old's like, I've, I've been through this struggle before, and I didn't enjoy it. I don't want to hear it again. Uh, so she asked, uh, she asked for advice, and the, the columnist said, you know, hey, just tell her to buzz off. You don't need anybody. You don't want to be vented to. And uh, so I got, to, I got to wondering what you all might think about that. Um, I'll tell you what I think about it. I think that... Uh, that it makes some some sense. I, do you ever, ha- you know, this idea of toxic people, the idea that you don't want to really surround yourself with people that are always negative because it just rubs off on you and you just, that you, the last thing you need is to deal with somebody else's problems. You've already got your own. So I, I kind of think the same thing, but I did want to go over it. I did want to, I did want to go through kind of a, just a thought experiment and just see kind of what you, what you would think. And so I just had to do that. So one of my questions was, uh, you know, I like working in the yard and I don't mind if neighbors come over as long as they know I'm working. So if I'm out cutting the grass, you know, I don't really want a little kid running across the, uh, the lawnmower. But if, uh, you know, if I'm working on the car or if I'm doing something like that and I'm going to be there for a couple hours, come over, you know, have a beer. Let's have a good time. Let's talk. So that doesn't bother me. But I can understand if you're looking for solace in your backyard that uh, that that could be a problem and then another question I had was uh, you know do you have an obligation to listen to your neighbor and uh, as an example what if they come over to tell you that they saw a strange person lurking lurking outside your house in the middle of the night like that's something you'd want to know I would think so you know do you I mean should you put up with somebody's garbage just so that you can, you know, learn about things in the neighborhood, uh, you know, that might be helpful for your safety. And then another thing I thought is, is it possible that the 24 year old doesn't have anything in her life at this point, And the 40 year old is literally the only thing keeping her from losing it. And then, you know, is that, is that the neighbor's problem? <clears throat> um, you know, you know, you know, the lady's going through trouble at 24 with a, a child and a divorce. And, uh, you know, maybe she's, you know, lost her social circle with the divorce. You never know. And, 
I don't know. I don't think it's the neighbor's problem, but at the same time, I, I get, I get to feeling sorry for the person I've never even met. So I guess, I guess that makes me a little silly, but, um, and then finally, you know, are you selfish if you just want peace in your backyard or did you sign up for whatever noises, children, construction, uh, fireworks, et cetera, when you moved into the neighborhood? So, so do you have a right to quiet in your own backyard? I don't know the answer. I mean, they, there used to be these laws, in, 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 at least in the county, where, you know, people couldn't, construction workers couldn't start work before like nine or something. Um, but I, I don't think anybody follows those rules. I mean, I don't think anybody cares. They just want to get the work done and get out. Um, and then there'll be like a special exemption for this or that or, or something like that. So I just thought it was an interesting story. You know, we don't, we haven't so far looked at someone like trying to be friendly, but imposing on your space. We, we haven't talked about that. So I, I just, I just wonder what y'all would think about that. And so, um, I also today, I'm going to do two things, which is, you know, two topics. Uh, I have a real estate story and, and I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to vent, <laughs> but part of this, part of the podcast, part of the videos are for like trying to understand things. And so, especially in my own, my own work, because I'm biased. I see, I see the world a certain way and I see my job in it uh, a certain way. So, so uh, having been in, you know, having and buying and selling homes now for a number of years, I don't, and with the brokerage, I don't, I don't have the, like, I feel like I can help home time, uh, first time home buyers, but I don't feel like, I don't, I don't feel the same way they do anymore. It's, it's, I've been through it enough times. And so uh, I, I like to help uh, home, uh, first time home buyers, but at the same time, you know, they, uh, they just, they just need a, a, a you know, a helping hand. They, they just need somebody to help guide them. And I'll never be able to kind of be in that position again, where I was a first time home buyer, it's gone. And so uh, anyway, that being said, I was out showing houses last night. Well, actually, I wasn't. I was out doing a walkthrough. And for those of you who don't know, the walkthrough is, at least in St. Louis, you get four days before property closes, the buyer can walk through the property and see if the repairs are done decent or if they just want to walk through, they can by contract. And so uh, so I I had to meet the buyers. I was, I was supposed to meet some new buyers or some the buyers of the house at uh, – 6 p.m. Got there early, about 5.50. And um, at about 5.55, I noticed that the neighbor next door came out on her porch and sat down and positioned her chair to look straight at this house that my buyers are buying. And I don't, I mean, I didn't think much of it at the time, but there's like some, there's some like shrubbery. I just like the word shrubbery. Uh, in between the two houses. So you couldn't really see her, but you could see her. You knew exactly that she was there. And so I went up and I opened the door, unlocked it and waited for my, uh, my buyers to come through. Uh, they got there and we walked through the property. Uh, and then we got done and the lady was still out there staring at us. And so I don't know, I don't know what I should do in that situation. I mean, I feel a little bit uncomfortable introducing myself to someone that's been staring at me for a half hour, 45 minutes. And it's, it was just odd. And I was curious, I did write a question or two down. I kind of want to take a look. So the only way I could figure it out is she was, you know, was she spying for the sellers? So did, were the sellers, did they want to know who was moving in the house? And so did, you know, did they have a previous relationship? Or uh, did she want to see who the new buyers were going to be? Uh, but what would you have done? I didn't wave. I didn't do anything because, again, I was on the other side of this shrubbery. I couldn't really see the woman. And so it just got, it just got awkward. And, and I know that doesn't seem 
I mean, it's a trivial thing. But now my buyers are going to live there for years. And so, and the houses are close. So it just, it fascinated me. And there's going to be all kinds of things that happen during my, my real estate time that I can ask you about. Because like I said, I, the world's, to me, has gone mad. I have no idea what the right answers are ever. Uh, and so I'm just, I'm always curious to what y'all think. So with that, uh, we've got a new thing coming up that's about neighbors and it's, you know, and I, and I'm trying to title it something like, am I the crazy one? So basically I've got a friend that, uh, tells me all these things about his neighbor. And then we, you know, the, the internet collective and I, uh, just read what's, what's up. And then is, is my, is my friend the crazy one or is the, uh, are the neighbors just actually crazy? So I know it's going to be a doozy. I know the first, I know some of the things that the neighbor's doing that, that are fantastic. So anyway, with that, email me at DearwoodRealtySDL.com or call us at 314-274-3964. Leave me a voicemail and uh, maybe we'll, uh, we'll go over your story sometime. Maybe we'll find out if you're the crazy one or if it's your neighbor. Uh, that's all I have for tonight. I will catch you on the next one.